In this video, we will be discussing SmartBear Software's code and artifact review tool, Collaborator. Without Collaborator, teams find themselves performing reviews by looking over each other's shoulders, sitting in meetings, and emailing files around. This can make performing reviews tedious and time-consuming, and makes collecting comments and metrics difficult. Collaborator offers a centralized, fun, and easy way for teams to perform reviews, which helps ensure a higher quality product with faster time to market. Let's get started by taking a look at a review. Here we see Collaborator's Div Viewer. This is really the heart of a review. On the right side, we see a side-by-side -side Diff View of a Java file that has been attached to the review. In this particular case, we're looking at a proposed change on the right and a previously checked in version on the left. Notice that there are a few icons associated with specific lines in the code. Those icons correspond to conversations listed on the left-hand portion of the Diff Viewer. One of the benefits of Collaborator is that it allows as many participants as is necessary to be a part of a review. The conversation portion of the viewer allows those users to make overall statements about the code, statements about specific lines, or file issues. Issues are items within the context of a review that must be addressed before the review can be closed. It is a way to ensure that uncovered items are fixed by the author. Clicking File in the upper navigation pane allows us to navigate to a requirements document that is also attached to this review. Collaborator supports .doc, .docx, .pdf, as well as image file types. Notice that the document also has comments and issues associated with it. However, instead of doing things by line, like in a code review, we do things based on a pushpin. The pushpins provide a reference point for the conversation. Also notice that the diff viewer shows additions and deletions, and the pushpins are moved to the appropriate location as changes are made. The real benefit to using Collaborator as a review tool is that it allows organizations a centralized place to manage code and artifact reviews, as well as provides reporting and metrics. As an example, think about trying to perform a code or document review via email. The more people you add to the email chain, the more messages you have going back and forth. This can get confusing for reviewers, but think about the challenge the author is faced with. They have to make sense of the email threads that are going back and forth, and then pull out the relevant items, compile a list of fixes, and then fix the issues. Once those items are fixed, the author could email them back out, but who on the list remembers what the author was actually supposed to fix? With Collaborator, all of that is handled for both the author and the participants. Plus, there are reports and metrics that are collected for all of the reviews. These reports and metrics provide management with the information they need to make informed decisions about the development process. Now that we have seen the benefits of Collaborator, let's quickly walk through creating a review. The Collaborator client is used to interface with the SCM and create reviews. The client supports a total of 16 different SCMs, including Git, Perforce, Subversion, TFS, and RTC. In addition to SCM support, SmartBear also offers an Eclipse plugin and a Visual Studio add-in, as well as a P4V add-in. We will be creating the review using the GUI client, but reviews can also be created via the command line. This client is pointed to Subversion, so we'll be using that to create the review. It is important to note that the tool supports both pre- and post-commit reviews, and we'll be doing a pre-commit review for this portion of the demo. We'll choose Add Changes, and give the review a name. Clicking Next, shows us the files that have been modified. Notice that you can also choose the Show Unchanged Files option. Clicking Next again provides you with an opportunity to attach supporting documentation, such as a review checklist. Clicking Next one more time shows us the total number of items that we'll be attaching to the review. If we're satisfied, we can click Finish. Clicking Finish tells the Collaborator client to gather both the locally modified files as well as the previously checked in version. It also tells the Collaborator server to create a new review. As you can see, the browser automatically opened to the newly created review, allowing us to specify the review information and assign participants to the review. We'll assign one reviewer and one observer to this review. Finally, we'll choose the option to apply and begin the review at the bottom of the screen. This notifies the participants that a new review is assigned to them. Notifications can occur via email, RSS feed, or through the tray icon. Let's open a browser and log into Collaborator as Justin the reviewer. Justin can see all of the reviews assigned to him, including the newly created review. Clicking on the review opens the review summary page. Justin can see all of the same review information that Bob the author defined during the review creation. Scrolling down, Justin can see the review materials that have been attached to the review. Clicking on the Java file opens a familiar screen, the diff viewer. As you can see, creating reviews is easy and intuitive. 
Now that we have discussed the benefits of Collaborator and shown how easy it is to create reviews, let's go back through the process and talk in more detail about some of the features offered in Collaborator. We'll start back at the client and create a new review. Again, Collaborator supports both pre- and post-commit reviews, so this time around let's do a post-commit review. Clicking on Add Subversion Diffs takes us to the Create New Review screen. We'll enter a name and click Next. Now we can specify our diff options by choosing a custom diff, revision, branches and tags, or date. We'll use revisions in this scenario. After entering our revisions, we'll click Next. Now we can add supporting documentation such as a review checklist and then click Next and we'll see the summary screen. If we're satisfied, we can click Finish. Again, the client is gathering the appropriate files from the SCM and will automatically launch the browser and create the review. Before the review can start, we need to fill in a few details. We can modify our basic review information here at the top, including title, group, templates, deadlines, as well as restricting access or providing an overview. Review custom fields will also be displayed in this area. Scrolling down, we can see the participant section. Since Bob created this review, he's automatically assigned as the author. The next step is to select participants. In the participant dropdown, you can see individuals as well as groups. The groups allow you to utilize a feature known as Review Pools. This feature assigns the review to the group, and then an individual in that group can volunteer to participate or take the review. We'll use Team A in this example. Finally, we'll set the role to Reviewer, and click Add. Reviews can have as many participants as is necessary, and a minimum number of participants can be modified using the role settings in the admin area. Scrolling down we see the issue log and chat section that can contain conversations about this review, and then finally the review materials section. Notice that our files are already attached to the review. In situations where files are not part of version control, you can attach them in two different ways. First, you can click on the Upload option in the Review Materials section. The next option is to drag the file directly over the Review Summary screen, and it will automatically attach it to the review. Dismiss the Upload Complete notification item, and then scroll down and choose your next step. You can either enter into the annotation phase or begin the review. The annotation phase is considered best practice and allows the author an opportunity to explain why they have made the changes that they have. This enables reviewers to work through the review much more quickly, since they now have an explanation from the author as to why the changes were made. That said, to keep things simple, we'll be using Begin Review. Returning to Justin the Reviewer's browser, we can see that the new review is automatically listed in the Action Items section. Again, Justin would have received notifications either via email, RSS feed, or through the tray icon. In this case, notice that the Progress column states that he is invited to participate. That means he is a member of Team A, the review pool, but that this review is not yet assigned to him. Clicking on the review will drill us into the review summary page. Justin can see all of the information that was defined by Bob, the author, and can see that the review is assigned to the pool. If Justin is available to take the review, he can click on the Take This Review Pool Selection icon. Now that Justin has volunteered for the review, he is listed as the reviewer and can start the review process. To start the review, he'll scroll down and select one of the files. Clicking on the file automatically opens it in the diff viewer. When performing a review, nothing requires that you comment on a specific file. If you don't feel that anything is wrong or needs to be said about that file, simply click File in the navigation bar and skip to the next one. Now we're looking at the primeutils.java file. When performing a review, you can make overall statements, select individual lines, or comment on a specific line and then file an issue. Clicking on Add as Issue provides the custom fields that have been added to this template. We'll fill in the fields and then click on Add Issue. Again, issues are items within the context of a review that need to be addressed by the author before the review can be closed. Once you are comfortable with that file, you can move on to the next. In this case, we'll be returning to our requirements document. Now we're looking at the Requirements document. Skipping to page 3, we can see additional text and a table. Reviews of Word documents, PDF files, and images are all handled in much the same way. Instead of associating comments with line numbers, like we do in code reviews, we associate comments by placing pushpins on the document. 
will create a few comments and issues now. Once the reviewer has completed reviewing the files, they need to return to the review summary screen. They can do that by clicking on the arrow or on the review number. Once the reviewer has returned to the review summary screen, the last action that they need to perform is to click on the Approve button in the Next Step section. This puts the review into the rework phase and assigns it back to the author. Let's return to Bob, our author's browser. Notice that the browser has been updated with all of the comments and issues that were flagged by the reviewer. Clicking on the comments opens the diff viewer. Bob can see all of the unread comments in yellow and can either respond to them or mark them as read. Let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of the author's view and the reviewer's web UI. We'll have Justin respond to Bob's comment. Notice that the author's browser automatically updates with the latest comment. This allows participants to review files simultaneously. If, however, participants are not reviewing files at the same time, then the comments are threaded out and marked in yellow so that the participants can pick up right where they left off the next time they log in. Let's return to our author's browser. Once Bob has read all of the comments for all of the files, he'll understand what needs to be addressed for the review. Let's assume that Bob has modified the Word document and is ready to attach it to the review. If that doc is part of version control, then he can upload it via the Collaborator client. Otherwise, Bob can return to the Review Summary screen, grab the file, and drag it over the top of the Review Summary page. Again, the file will automatically be attached to his review. Since Bob also needs to fix an issue in the Java file, let's open that file and make some changes. Once the changes are made, Bob will go ahead and commit them. Then, returning to the Collaborator client, Bob will choose Add Subversion Diffs. Rather than creating a new review, Bob will choose the existing review and click Next. Again, we'll enter in the appropriate revision, click Next, where we can add supporting documentation if needed. We'll click Next one additional time and then finally finish. Once all of the files have been modified, Bob will scroll down to the very bottom where he can see that his changes have been attached to the review. The last step is to click on Request Verification, which sends the review back to the review participants, notifying them again via RSS, email, or through the tray icon. Opening just in the reviewer's browser, we can see that the review has re-entered into the inspection phase. Scrolling down to the Review Materials section shows us that the files have been reworked one time. Opening the Requirements document and navigating to page 3 shows us the changes that have occurred. Notice that the pushpins have been moved to the appropriate location on the newly uploaded file. Also notice that the changes are appropriately highlighted as part of the diff. The really great part about Collaborator is that it allows multiple participants to simultaneously work on a single review and file. And it captures all of their comments and threads them out so that it is easy to understand why changes have been made. Because the issues on the requirements document have been addressed, it is the reviewer's responsibility to mark them as fixed. In order to mark an item as fixed, the reviewer needs to go to that item and click on the Mark Fix button. Notice that the issue goes from red to green, illustrating that it has been addressed. Moving on to our Java file, we can see all of the changes in the diff viewer. Again, we can easily skip down to the comments and issues by clicking on the chat icon. Also notice that the line numbers have been updated appropriately. Just like the Word document, it is the reviewer's responsibility to make sure the issues have been fixed. Once they're addressed, they need to click on the Mark Fixed button. Though the reviewer and the author only sent the files back and forth one time, files can be sent back as many times as is necessary to ensure that all potential problems have been addressed. Once all of the files have been reviewed and all of the issues have been fixed, the reviewer needs to return to the Review Summary screen and click on the Approve button. Once approved, the review enters into the completed phase, and scrolling up we can see that in the phase diagram. Now that the review is completed, let's look at a detailed report for the review. We'll click on the Details option. The detailed report provides an overview section that includes things like how much time was spent in the review and how many issues were filed. As we move down, we can see a participant's list and how much time they spent in the review, as well as an issue log. Scrolling down further, we can see the material summary information, which includes things like review metrics for defect density and inspection rate. 
Finally, scrolling down to the bottom shows us a list of all of the conversations that were had as part of the review process. Other reports are available in the tool by clicking on the Reports option in the upper right-hand corner. You'll notice that there are many customizable reports that can be tweaked to meet your needs. Collaborator offers a ton of great features that weren't mentioned during the demonstration, but include customizable workflows, group security, electronic signatures, audit trails, LDAP integration, and more. Hopefully this demonstration has provided you with a solid understanding of the fantastic review capabilities offered in Collaborator and has shown how it reduces review times and can eliminate meetings, allowing people to perform reviews when it's convenient for them. It provides the audit trail and review metrics needed for process improvement and compliance reporting. With Collaborator, reviews actually get done. People don't give up in frustration because it's just too difficult to coordinate, capture, and track details. For more information about Collaborator or any other SmartBear product, please visit www.smartbear.com. Thanks for watching.